Welcome back to Girls Next Level. How's your week, Bridget? It was good. Uh, busy. <laughs> what have you been up to? We need to know. We just leaving me hanging. Oh, just the normal stuff, but I just feel like it's been busy. I think it's just because of the rain and everything. I think things just feel a little bit more chaotic than... They really do in LA when it is raining, which yeah. it rarely does. You kind of feel like you're doing a little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just harder to do everything because everything just slows down. And yeah. It's just screeching halt and plans change and mm -hmm. like so much. It, there's just, it's a topsy turvy week. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's been so much drama on like TikTok and stuff that I've been involved in. And we already talked about it on our slumber party. But that's kind of like what I'm reeling from as we're recording this episode. And I'm a little bit over caffeinated. So we'll see how it goes. Uh oh, I try and stay out of all of that. But I know you're very good at it. But this was, <laughs> I try to stay out of it too, just because I don't want to bring it more attention. But sometimes, you know, you Sometimes know. things have to be said. Yeah, they do. So, um, we are right smack in the middle of Season 1, Episode 9, Under the Covers. This is us shooting our very first Playboy cover. We talked about that last week. And now we're kind of getting into the part of the episode where I'm throwing a barbecue over at the Playmate house across the street. And I know we've talked about the Playmate house on the podcast before. But just a little recap, it was a place across the street, a house that Hef owned, and we decided we wanted to invite playmates to live there because we thought it would be fun. And we had the idea probably way back in like early 2004, but it was really only starting to happen in 2005 when we started filming the show. And since the girls were moving in, I thought it would be a good idea to throw them a little barbecue to welcome them there. One thing I wanted to mention too is that when we first came up with that idea, initially Hef wanted to like charge the girls rent. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah, that wasn't the point of it in any way, shape, or form. We were like, that is that no. <laughs> we kind of wanted it to be like a stepping stone or like a jumping off point for like playmates who wanted to like move to LA and try and make it in show business. Like it's so helpful to have, you know, a free place to stay. Absolutely. And plus, like, charging rent reminds me of, like, a pimp taking a cut or something. I just don't like it. Ew. So, anyway, they got to stay there free of charge. <laughs> yeah. And the women we invited to live there were um, Carmela and Tiffany, who were the current and the previous year's Playmate of the Year, and then Cara Monaco, who was a Playmate, and Jillian Grace, who was a Playmate. You know what somebody asked me in um, my DMs once? I thought this was a really good question. Somebody asked me, was it racist that there was never any black women or women of color living at the Playmate house? And I thought that was an interesting question. And I don't think it was. There just honestly weren't a lot of black Playmates at the time. Yeah. And the two that were most recent were local. Like, and kind of our point in inviting those girls were people who lived out of town. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any say at that point in who was chosen to be a Playmate or not. So... Right. So the next scene is me in the med room. I really like my ponytail. Laurent did a cute updo ponytail for uh, me. Love I, it. Well, I thought it was funny because you make a carrot joke to Lori, but she's not paying any attention. Well, it's funny because you're not paying any attention to what she's saying to you, and she's not paying any attention to what you are saying to her, but you guys are both having separate conversations. You know what's interesting is I can't speak for where she was coming from on that, but those kind of interactions are not unusual for me. I have no gauge for things like that that other people kind of naturally have. I'm also a really big interrupter. If you guys didn't notice in the early podcast episodes, I'm a big interrupter and I just don't have that gauge other people have for when someone else is ready to stop speaking. And I kind of have this feeling of, oh my God, I need to say it now or it's never gonna come out. It's, and that used to be a thing. And I would, I didn't speak up a lot at the mansion, but sometimes I would say things at the dinner table that were a little interrupty and Hef would get pissed he'd like yell like don't interrupt me and i'm like jesus well you make a funny carrot joke but Lori's not paying any attention because she's trying to ask you and i feel like this is key here that's why i'm bringing it up she's trying to ask you if they should if she should go ahead and make the hamburger patties for you ahead of time yeah and so because i mean it comes you should have let her <laughs> i really should have i think the only reason i didn't was kind of like 
the point in filming that was it was one of those like silly simple lifey scenes like let's see what this girl can't do no I get it <laughs> I get why you did it and I get why it was for mm-hmm. the show and stuff like that but like I just felt like this was kind of a pivotal moment right here because oh yeah it's where things went downhill yeah if you would have <laughs> just been like yeah prep the patties ahead of time like it would have the whole day would have gone so different I think so too and <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean in real life if I hadn't been trying to like film the process of doing something I 100% should have let her dip done it because like I said in the last episode like I'd never cooked meat before <laughs> so this was a new thing and if there's anything you're gonna be nervous about cooking it's meat right you give somebody food poisoning right yeah yeah these and are then, very and people, dire circumstances and people like their meat done different ways which we're gonna get into in a little yeah, bit that's too. true and then we see Julie McCullough makes yeah. her first appearance on the show so Julie McCullough was a fixture at the mansion she was a playmate in 1986 and if any of y'all were alive in the 80s she was on growing pains which I remember seeing her as a little kid on Growing Pains. And that wasn't really a show I watched or paid much attention to. It was just kind of something that was on when the TV was on in the living room. Yeah. But I remember noticing her back then because she was just so freaking cute. Mm-hmm. She's just adorable. But anyway, she lived next door at Hap's wife's house. And she was just over there a lot. Always working on a screenplay and drinking a coffee. Yeah, always she's had a coffee. coffee shop girl. Yeah, <laughs> and she's asked you what you're making, and the way she asked you is like it's so unbelievable to her what you're doing right now. <laughs> like I didn't she's just that like part. mind That's blown. Funny. <laughs> she's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like, that is so funny. Well, I guess nobody ever sees anybody like chopping vegetables in the med room. Okay, well that was my next thing. We've talked about how inappropriate it was for us to be in the kitchen and mm-hmm. why we couldn't be down there doing stuff. And even when you do want to cook, yeah, they have you like stationed in the med room away from everybody else. Like, who goes in there? That's like going into your dining room to cook. I know it's like really why weird. would you prep stuff in your dining room? You just yeah. wouldn't, and it makes it impossible because obviously. Lori's bringing you a carrot because mm-hmm. she had to wash them because you don't have a sink in the bedroom. Yeah. She has to go into the sink. Like, the kitchen is like literally two rooms away because you have the pantry in between. But that's just a good example of how busy the mansion kitchen was. Like there was probably legitimately luncheons and shit that they had to be cooking full steam ahead for. And they don't have time for me filming the show. Right, <laughs> right. So you were, you know, relegated to the med room, which mm-hmm. is just such an awkward, weird place. And the... And the dining room table, or the bedroom table is not, like, counter height. And yeah, stuff, so it makes things right. extra hard. Like, I just felt like that was not, not good, not a good cooking first time. Yeah, it was really random. I also noticed I just was not getting my nails done or painted at all, which seems so odd. Oh. Yeah. Well, I remember making that decision, though, because when we started filming the show, I felt like I didn't even have time to get my nails done at that point. So I just stopped doing my nails. Yeah. I feel like I was doing my nails regularly, but now I don't. <laughs> now I I'm do the opposite. Own. I do. But you're lucky, though, because you have strong nails that grow. I don't. I have to do acrylics. Yeah. But acrylics kind of make me feel like I have the illusion of really having my life together. <laughs> I, it does. It makes me feel well, hey. I've gone off and on about, like, whether or not I do my nails or get them done professionally or whatever. But, like, maybe the past year or so, I started getting the acrylics, and it just makes me feel, like, a little more polished, like I'm a little bit more together than I actually am. Well, then that's worth it to do it. Yeah, it's like a good, you know, subconscious mindset thingamabobby going on. Yeah. Well, and then the next scene, Kendra's actually eating in her room. Wait, I thought she always went downstairs because she wouldn't have the butler spring a tray to her room. Well, in this scene, she is, but I can see why she doesn't want to eat in her room. Her dogs were constantly harassing her. Yeah. Totally. Um, And then we see Hunter the chef in the pantry. And it's another moment where I'm like, Hunter! Like all these staff people that I haven't thought about in so many years. It's so great to see their faces again. I know. It really is. I like how when you're making the pasta salad too, they have this scary music playing in the back. And they turn it green and bubbly, which I think is so funny. It's very, yeah. it's, I love all this cartoony shit. It's my favorite. Another thing I noticed when I'm making the food is I'm so disgusted watching myself because I'm constantly like eating parts of it. Like if I cut up the cheese, I'll eat a piece of cheese. And you can, you can tell if you're paying attention too. I swear to God, if I eat something out of my hands, I wash my hands after before I touch anything. Swear to God. But it kind of looks like I don't. 
if you're not really thinking about it. It just looks like I'm like eating with my hands and like putting my hands back in. Wait, every time you took a piece of cheese, you ran and washed your hands again before you touched the pasta? No, well, if I ate a piece of cheese. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. I just pop a piece of cheese in my mouth and keep going. <laughs> Am I gross? I was watching it. I was like, oh, I look disgusting. But I, th I think they cut it that way on purpose, which I'm not, like, offended about. But I think it was, like, trying to make me look like I'm a gross, unsanitary cook. I just feel like, well, yeah, I did feel like they were trying to make the scene look that way a little bit. But I didn't get that from you popping food while you were doing that. I eat while I cook the whole time. I do sometimes, too. I mean, it depends who I'm cooking for, though. Like, if I'm just making something for myself, I won't bother, but it depends. Yeah. Depends who else is eating it. That's interesting. I wonder if other people do that. Like, I, I mean, I don't think anything of it. Like, if I pop a piece of cheese in my mouth while I'm cutting it up or whatever, I just keep going. Like, I don't stop and wash my hands and be like, oh, I just touched my mouth or something. Yeah, like, I just keep I going. Know. And now I'm like, wait, am I gross? <laughs> I mean, I'm only cooking for Nick and I, so, like, I feel like who cares? Yeah. But, like... You guys are probably sw swapping spit elsewhere. It's so it's, true. it's, like, not a big deal. That is true. <laughs> okay, so then the next scene... Um, is it the office? Yeah, you go down the office, and okay. you're asking Norma about the magazine. Yeah, because I was a major snoop, which I admitted on the show. But I think it's interesting to note why I was a snoop. I was a snoop because for years I'd been living in, like, this high-stress situation where I felt like I had no control like, I didn't know who was going to come into the bedroom and have to, like, watch me have sex or, like, just weird traumatic shit like that. So I felt like if I could kind of see, because Hef would always have pictures of, like, the girls that were coming in or coming out with us, and they weren't hidden away. It's not like I was diving into a file cabinet I wasn't supposed to be looking in. Like, they were kind of sitting out in a particular spot. But I did always want to be up on it and see what's going on. Because I just wanted to be, like, mentally and emotionally prepared. So I feel like, I mean, I am kind of a very curious person anyway. Like, I'm that girl who grew up reading Nancy Drew, and I always have to have a mystery to solve. But on top of that, I think I was extra, extra big on snooping because I just felt like I had no control of the situation. And something traumatic could come down the pipeline at any time. And my way of feeling in control at all was, you know just trying to prepare myself like what's coming what's coming down the pipeline yeah staying on top of it so the next scene um I'm in my room with Winnie and oh I have a question to ask you what? it's a game that I'll probably be bring out throughout the series cosplay or coincidence <laughs> do you know what I'm gonna say my outfit were you dressed as Marianne from Gilligan's Island or is that a coincidence well, I mean, I like a theme for everything. Yeah. So I don't think it's like, I think it's somewhere in between. Yeah. <laughs> like it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be Marianne, but at the same time, I was trying to be like, you know. Cutesy. Cutesy. Yeah. Like the, the, you were, we were doing like that, bringing the new girls. Like she was always the one that would bring the pie yeah. to everyone. Uh -huh. and stuff like, like that kind of thing. So I think um, it was somewhere in between. Plus I think like a little handkerchief top and, and, and jean shorts is very barbecue, barbecue. Yeah. backyard barbecue type look so Do you I remember think... that's a sorry to cut you off i'm interrupting again um there was a halloween costume idea we were going to do and never did like i was going to be ginger and you were going to be marianne that was always kind of on our list our docket of halloween costumes we were going to do it still would be totally cute. It would be. Do people know Gilligan's Island? Because obviously Gilligan's Island was fucking old even back then. Yeah. But I feel like people kind of knew of it more back then because we're still in the era of like daytime TV reruns. And I'm like, does Gen Z know Gilligan's Island? I have no idea. But do you know that they went? They were bringing it back and I went and auditioned for it? No, tell me. This was while we were at the mansion. Or it might have been just before I moved in, but I think I was already at the mansion. Mm -hmm. And I went on an audition and I feel like I'm fully Marianne, right? Yeah. And I dressed as Marianne. Probably that same outfit. I don't know. Yeah. And I went to the audition and the director or producer, whoever it was, the casting director, I think, looked at me and goes... <laughs> You're clearly a ginger. <laughs> oh my god. That is so funny. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, no, I'm totally a Marianne. Isn't it funny how you feel like you know who you are inside and everybody else sees you different? <laughs> like, I feel like in the Scooby-Doo universe, I'm 100% Velma, but I don't think anyone would think that. I think everybody's like, bitch, you're Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think I'm Daphne, but people probably think I'm Velma. No, they do not <laughs> think you're Velma. Or Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know 
out that's another thing you have in common with Elvira because they were doing some Gilligan's Island comeback in like the 80s or something. And before she was Elvira, she like auditioned, I think, for Ginger and like almost got it, yeah. but like didn't at the last minute for some reason. And another crazy story from the Elvira book that's a, the craziest manifestation story I've ever heard is when she was a little kid, she loved Gilligan's Island and she loved Ginger. And she would always like imagine herself as Ginger, play dress up as Ginger. And she says that she grew a natural mole on her face, just appeared out of what? nowhere, that's in the same place as Ginger's mole. That is crazy. It, it, she has the best manifestation stories. So I had Elvira on my podcast, mm -hmm. or Cassandra, on my podcast, and she told me the story about her doing the Ginger Marianne thing, or well, yeah. Ginger, the Gilligan's Island mm -hmm. thing, and I told her about my Marianne story. That's so <laughs> funny. I know, but I didn't know about the mole. Yeah, that's the craziest. That's straight witchcraft. Man. Yeah, that's the craziest. Man. She has so many good manifestation stories. I hope we can get her on when she's like on when we get to the girls next door episode that she's on. Oh yeah, so good. Yeah, we'll ask her for sure. Okay, so I'm in my room. We're getting ready to go over to the bunny house. I'm trying to put Winnie's harness on for the first time. By the way, her collar is so cute. Like, Playboy had a really cute pet line yeah. at the time. Like, you can see if you're looking closely, we have, like, dog bags that are Playboy brand and dog beds. But the pink collar with the rhinestone bunnies that Winnie has on was so cute. I it's forgot a, about that. It's adorable. And Anastasia and I are trying to get it on her, and she's, like, not having it. Aww. And this is the first time she's going for a walk on the leash. Did she walk all the way over to the Playmate house? I think I did have her oh, walk wow. all the way over. I don't know, because it doesn't show the whole way, yeah. so maybe at some point I picked her up. Mm -hmm. But I think my point was, because it's not that far. It's, yeah. a, it's a long walk mm -hmm. for somebody that little, but it's not that far. So I think I was hoping that she would make it, get her exercise in and get used so to sort of walking she's doing really good on the leash for the first time yeah that she would just stop and then every once in a while she like yelp like but it wasn't because she was hurt she was yelping because she was like mad at me like i want to stop oh, <laughs> like so putting cute. her little foot down i love it which i love I miss her Aww. i literally miss everything about her like i watch her walk and i'm like i miss it it's so great just to have this footage of the dogs in different phases too yeah, and obviously I'm not actually walking over here yet. I mean, you're still setting up like crazy. Unless I go and help you set up, but they just don't show it. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember. Because it has me walking over like it looks like hours before we're yeah. even ready. <laughs> and I swear, Winnie took a long time, but not that long. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm over at the Playmate house trying to talk to the camera, talking about how I need smaller bowls for the chips. Wait, I have a question before yeah. you go into that. Yeah. Did my sister walk over there with me? That's how I remember the scene. Me too, but do they show her? Oh, wait, they do show her. A little they bit, They do yeah. show her. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, she's there. Yeah, you're talking about the chip bowls being too big, which they were. Yeah, they were. You can see my Disney dishes that I stashed over there. And they ask you, what is the definition of being a perfect hostess? And you say, somebody who prepares the party perfectly. And then the tires screech. They do the sound effect. Oh, my gosh. And it shows you running for the phone. Yeah. Diving onto the couch. And I look super annoying because I look like I'm calling them a million times and making them come back and forth a million times. But I think I even say in the show, like, wait a second before you guys come over here because I might be forgetting stuff and I'm going to keep calling you. Yeah. And they do an up-the-skirt shot. I know. You can fully see my underwear. I just gave no fuck in those days and the giving no f extended onto like the first season of holly's world like seeing those episodes i'm like why did i think it was okay to wear a bra out in public <laughs> i mean i think it was only okay because like right after the mansion i moved to vegas and you can kind of get away with more stuff in vegas yeah but i look back at what i used to wear and i'm like i'm wearing a skirt that's literally the size of a belt and if i even move you see my underwear like why did i think that was okay not that there's anything wrong with it if that's what somebody wants to wear but I'm like, damn. Yeah. Well, you know what? I didn't think there was anything wrong with you diving on the couch and not giving a care that the cameras were there. But I don't know why they had to, like, keep that in. Like, why couldn't they, like, pan or, like, I don't know. I just feel They're like. They're just looking for anything. Yeah. What was the weird sculpture? But it was a good thing you were wearing panties. I That's what I noted God. on here. I know. I know. <laughs> because I thought that been you rough. might not have been. Yeah. <laughs> What is the weird sculpture that's in the corner of the bunny house living room? I didn't pay attention. It's like next to the phone when I'm calling and it's like a tall black rectangular column with like a weird silver thing in the middle. And it's so weird. And I don't know what it is or what kind of significance it would have to have that he would keep it. 
Uh, was it some sort of weird award or something? That I don't got? think so. It looked like a weird apparatus. Ew. Yeah, it was <laughs> like bizarre. That's like something now, from a '50s science fiction movie. Now I need to go back in and look and see what it was. I'm not. I don't even recall. Yeah, you'll remember it once you see it. But it was weird. But one of the things you ask the butlers for, you ask them for iced tea and the homemade pickle chips. Should we talk oh about the God. homemade pi- yes. pickle chips? Okay, so we would go to Mary O'Connor's house quite often to play cards, and Mary's sister-in-law Sheila would make these amazing sweet pickle chips. And I'm not even a sweet pickle fan. Like, Girl, I'm a dill all the way. I hate sweet pickles. Except for these. Say, except for these. I don't know what it is. But these are like a combination of dill and sweet. Yeah, and they're so good. It's like if you like kettle corn where it's salty and sweet at the same time, I feel like you'll love these pickle chips. They're so good. And then you got the recipe and made me some like a couple years ago. Yes. And did we meet in Griffith Park or something? Yeah. Yeah. So I took the thing and then I sat by the Griffith Park carousel and just stared at it and ate like half the jar of pickles after you left. And then I got in my car and in one of my Range Rovers, there's a cooler in the console and it fit perfectly in the cooler. And I was just the smuggest bitch on the planet with my pickles in the cooler. Maybe we need to do like a Patreon video of us making the pickle chips or something. Absolutely. Or YouTube or something. Because they're so good. Yeah. They're delicious. Like I'm craving one right now. I'm now watering. And it's crazy because I do not like sweet pickles at all. And I... I hesitate to even say it to people that they're sweet because I know when you don't like sweet pickles, you really don't like sweet Mm -hmm. pickles. And it's like you don't even want to try it. But I I had to make Nick try them. I'm like, no, trust me. I swear. Yeah, these are something else. Mm-hmm. Who did I invite that didn't show up? In commentary, I mentioned like Ashley, which isn't a surprise, Victoria, Mary. But in commentary, I'm like, I invited a bunch of people that didn't show up. Yeah, I don't know who mm-hmm. all you invited. I don't remember what the guest list was. Me either. But it did seem very, okay, first of all, it's a pretty large house. Yeah. And that's a really large room. Mm-hmm. And so even though there was like, I didn't count how many of us there were, but what, like eight total maybe? Yeah. Which I think is a pretty good size of, yeah, you know. Yeah, we get together. Yeah. Um, but it, was it the most awkward fucking thing? Yeah, it did seem like there was just nobody there. Yeah, and my thoughts on that, I mean, it was so awkward. It was awkward when it was happening. It was awkward to watch. And my thoughts on that are kind of, you're right, it's a small amount of people for a large house. But also I feel like everybody was extra awkward because none of us have ever done a reality show before. The producer of this reality show has never done a reality show before. And I feel like we were just all so awkward because it was the first time we'd ever had to like film anything as a get together with no music. Oh, no music is the hardest part. Yeah, no background, anything. Everybody's self conscious because by the we're filming this like in June of 2005. None of us have seen an episode, none of us know anything. The new girls at the house have no clue what this is. It's probably their first day filming. So everybody's just awkward, and it looks like the lamest get-together, and it kind of was not because we didn't love each other and didn't want to have fun, but I think everybody was just like, okay, what do we do? Yeah, well, they want to film you sitting around talking and stuff. You know what? I was was kind of um, surprised when I went over there because for some reason, I had it in my head that it was a backyard barbecue. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought it was going to be outside. Like a grill. Yeah, Yeah, and a barbecue, and maybe even, like, sticking our feet in the pool, and, like, that kind of thing. So I was kind of like, oh, okay, we're in the house, which is fine. But I feel like I was a little bit thrown off by that. Yeah. And then, um, and then, yeah, it's just, you can't have music, so, and then nobody wants to divulge, like, you know. What actually happened that day. (laughs) Yeah, they don't want to actually talk about stuff stuff in their life that they want to keep private because we're filming and so it's like oh Winnie's so cute Um, how was your day you know just like very surface like weird stuff and over time we would get better at it of course and like know how to navigate but this was just the first time we ever tried it and it was so fucking awkward (laughs) yeah uh so I have two then that you say they cut back to you like they're kind of intercutting these things with your voiceover from your mm-hmm. interview and you're going on to say the perfect hostess also needs to be friendly and then it cuts back to you calling the mansion staff again yeah. <laughs> and then um and then call, calling again for the bottle of jack and then it cuts back to me walking again with winnie and then back to you. And now you're in the housewife costume. I love the housewife costume. So I do too. Do you still have it? No, I think I threw it out because I just thought, oh, this is cheap and dumb or it got lost along the way. 
But um, it was one of those really inexpensive leg avenue costumes that come in a bag. Yeah. But it was, it, there's just something so cute about it, at least I think so, that even if I didn't have occasion to dress up as a housewife, like I think, because we would have so many occasions to dress up. I remember when the new leg avenue catalogs came out, we would just kind of like scour through them and be like, okay, what could, because they would give us free costumes, didn't they? Yeah, at some point they did. Yeah, they gave us free costumes. So, and they'd be like, oh, what do you want? So we would like comb through the catalog and be like, oh, what could we possibly in the future want to use to dress up as? And I ordered the housewife outfit without even an idea for it because I just thought it was so freaking cute. Yeah, it was cute. But see, I keep even those kind of costumes. Like, I bet I have a ton of Lake Avenue costumes That's in my fun. stuff. I looked up online to see if they still sell it, and they don't. Like, of course, you can find it secondhand, but I don't think they still, like, make that costume. So it cuts to you in the kitchen at the bunny house. Burgers are going. And you say, how hard can it be to cook a hamburger and a hot dog? Yeah, it was a little bit more difficult. I'd never used that stove before. And any of you out there who have, like, used different stoves, whether you've moved or whatever, every stove is a little bit different. Like, you can set it to the temperature or do whatever, but... Like, it depends, you know, what stove I'm at, how, how I have to cook something. Well, and the bunny house is an electric stove, which yeah, kind of throws weird. me off. Like, I've always cooked with gas stoves, I feel like, my whole life. And so an electric stove is a little bit weird. Yeah, and also, like, I remember the camera people being really, really hovering over me. Like, literally the camera, like, over my shoulder, like a parrot perched on there. And I have, like, these, like pots of boiling water and I don't want to like touch anybody with anything hot so it was just like awkward and weird which is fine for the show like the more troublesome it is for me probably the better so how pissed was Hef that he had to walk all the way across the street <laughs> do you think he was I don't know I don't think he was like pissed that he had to walk across the street but when I'm watching this now like I can feel his grumpiness at like like, I just feel like he walked across the street, and by the time he's at the bunny house, like, I can feel, like, his grumpiness. Because he always, like, had a bad back, and plus he was old and didn't like doing things he didn't want to do, as nobody does. But I can just feel it looking at him. I don't know. Like, I think by the time he gets to the Playmate house, he's a little bit ruffled. Like, trying not to be, but, like, ugh, that was a hike. Yeah, you know what else I felt was weird is that nobody waited for him. To, we were all already over there because mm -hmm. I feel like he doesn't like to do anything by himself, not even walk from the mansion to the bunny house. I feel mm -hmm. like he would have wanted, okay, maybe you have to already be over there to be setting up, but where was where was me and Kendra? Like, we should have been walking over there with him is what I think he yeah. was feeling. Or, and also one of the reasons, you know, in season three, you get me that golf cart for my birthday. And the main idea for getting a golf cart was I thought it would be so nice and convenient to have a little golf cart to go back and forth between the houses, which certainly Hef would have benefited from because yeah. out of all of us, he's the one who least likely wants to walk there. But remember, he didn't want to get that for me for my birthday. Yeah. He was super anti. And I'm like, but this is kind of like contributing to the betterment of the environment. Yeah. I think. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm lining up jello shots, which jello shots, I know we've talked about them a little bit on here before. They were a thing at the mansion. They really were. They were good. Like, we started out every event with jello shots. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we do have a fun group. I know it was, a, they make it look small and boring and stuff, but it was a fun group. It was Carmela and Tiffany and Cara Monaco, Jillian, Anastasia, Kendra, m me, you, and Hannah. Uh -huh. So it was a good group. Tiffany comes in to say hi to you. In the kitchen. Yeah. And then the next thing that happens is something that happens off camera. And it's like an echo of when Hef snapped at me when I was trying to talk to him about the Marilyn Monroe book. They don't show it. But when I give him the burger and he first takes a bite of the burger, he goes, that's terrible. Wait, what? Yes. In real life, they just don't include it. That's why I get weird and leave the party. And I was so embarrassed, because I know that's not like the craziest, meanest thing to say, but I'm telling you, just the way he would say things to me sometimes would just be like so cutting and just make me feel so stupid. And I was so embarrassed that he did that on camera. Of course, they don't use it, but I was just so like humiliated. That's why I end up leaving. Of course, I don't ever say that in the show or the commentary because I have to like protect him, but I was just like okay, I feel so dumb now. Like, get me the fuck out of here. Like, so, the floor open up and swallow me. Oh, my God. Um, 
I have a whole bunch of stuff to say before we get to that part. Yeah. Can I back up a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Tiffany comes in to talk to mm-hmm. you, and you say, she, she's asked if you, she says, I've never seen you cook before. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, I know I haven't. And the mansion gave you pointers on how to cook, and you say the judges are out there, and that's when Hef walks up. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's, they're trying to show that that's the real judge, not the rest of us. Yeah, but ironically, they don't show what he really did, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to say, too, you being stuck in the kitchen and, like, being so isolated from the rest of the party, this is why I, like, will not buy a house that doesn't have, like, the open kitchen concept. Yeah. Like, I need that big open space. Like, there's no reason why the person who is hosting the party should be stuck in the kitchen and, like, being the one isolated from the party the most. Yeah, when the kitchen is a good hangout space, it's so fun. Yeah. And then, um... Hef walks up, and again, they're trying to make... I See, I feel like the cameras were trying to make the party look even more boring than it really was. Like, I don't feel like it was as boring as it looked. I thought it uh-huh. was fun and a nice get-together. But I think they're really trying to make it look like crickets. Yeah. Like, Hef walks up, and he's like, well, I must be early, indicating that the party is a dud, yeah. and there's no one there, and it's just, like, quiet and stuff. Um... And then it cuts to you, like, saying you don't know how long to, like, leave the burgers on for. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. Oh, the water isn't boiling. And you didn't have the burner on. And it's just, like, they're, like, just trying to show that everything is going yeah. to hell in a hand <laughs> basket here. And then you're, like, they, and then I liked how you said, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. And you chug a jello shot. Yeah. <laughs> And then you test a burger. But I like that you take a bite of it. And then you're, like, Meh, and throw it in the yeah. sink. <laughs> it's, like, it must not have been that good. Well, also, I think there were a lot of, like, body image issues going on, so... Yeah, that's true, too. But then Hef says, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm behind the bar. Uh Uh-huh. Just because I'm, like, helping people out and stuff, you know? And Hef looks at me like I'm I'm staff and says, can I get a Jack and Cola? Oh, my God, I didn't notice that. That's funny. Yeah, he says, can I get... I put it in quotes. Can I get a Jack and Cola? Like that is so funny. Like he didn't even know who I was or something. I was like, oh, I know. Like I feel okay. like an ordinary relationship. You're like, oh, hey, Bridget, can you make me like a Jack and Coke, please? <laughs> but yeah, not. yeah. But he totally talked to me like I was the bartender or that something. That is so weird. I was like, okay. oh my god. And then you come flying out with a baby burger for him. And then he says it's awful. And then I kind of just go back to the kitchen. <laughs> yes. But and I, later, they cut to him saying, he's holding up a burger, and he's like, oh, it's good, but I usually eat it with blah, blah, blah. But I don't even remember hearing him say that in real life, because I was just so, like, shook by that first reaction that I was just like, uh. <laughs> well, what probably happened is he said what he said, and then he's explaining to the rest of us, because he feels like an asshole now, like, that he usually has cheese on it, and yeah. the onions are usually in it, and he's, like, trying to explain yeah, and it's just like, like... Well, you were still there, though, because you did say, oh, I tried to put the onions on, but they all fell out. And I can tell by my voice, like, I'm just, like, ready to cry. Like, maybe other people can't tell, but I'm just like... No, eh. I can tell. <laughs> it's so bad. I can tell. And then you're like, I tried to do all the burgers medium, but they were more, like, medium rare, and it shows Kendra biting into one. Uh-huh. And, and it's like, it plays a screaming noise, and she goes, oh, my God, or something like that. I forget what... I know, but that was, like, cut in. It was cut in, totally. Yeah. But I love medium rare, so like they were perfect for me. But can we just talk about how Kendra used to like her meat? Yeah, she's one of those people who doesn't want any pink in it at all, like burn. Not only that, she wants it charred. Like yeah. she takes a steak at Mastro's and she like has it butter, what they call butterfly, which is where they cl- slice it down the middle it's, and and it's thinner, and then like just char it on both sides. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I cannot with that. Oh yeah, they made a mooing sound. When oh she took my a bite. god, that's funny. So um, then I say I feel alienated from the other girls, which is a lie. Like, there's... I mean, I did feel like the party was really fucking awkward. But that was just because it was the first time we were ever doing anything like that on camera. But that's just a lie. That's just me in the interview seat. Like, I'm just not in the position I'm in. I'm not going to say, Hef was a dick, so I left. Like, I'm just not going to say that. So I'm just trying to cover any way I can. I'm curious. If you did say that, I wonder... I wonder if they would have played it in the show at all. Do you think they just would have cut it? 
I don't know. That's a really good question. But honestly, like putting myself back in that moment, I would never even said it because I'm trying to put myself back in the moment how I felt. And just the thought of sitting there in that interview chair and explaining that he was a dick that day, like I can feel myself wanting to cry. You know what I mean? Like, not like I want to cry right now this minute, but like when I put myself back in that mindset. So I don't think I ever even would have said that. It was just too like off limits for me. Like I didn't even want to be that vulnerable because like what he said and again, it's not like saying, oh, this is terrible. It's like the meanest thing you can ever say to anybody. But there was just a way he had of speaking sometimes that just made me feel like absolute shit. Yeah. And I just, I can't even picture myself talking about that in an interview in season one. Like maybe in later seasons when I get more confident, I'm comfortable like playing stuff off as a joke or like, you know, sometimes when I, when something would come up with Hef being difficult, I would talk about an interview, but kind of play it off like joking a little bit. So I knew it would like get by. Um, but at this, this point I would never have said anything. Yeah. Did you notice that they show you cleaning up and they make a close up on the garbage and there's tons of pasta salad in there as if nobody ate it. Like it was so oh, that's gross. Funny. Yeah. No, I do notice there's like a running theme with like, they hate the pasta salad, but I love that pasta salad. I still make it to this day sometimes. And then this is the part where I feel like it gets really awkward. Like, we're just all sitting around in the... I mean, you had left, or uh -huh. you're cleaning up the kitchen still. You're not in the scene. But, like, we're just all sort of sitting around like, yeah. Yeah, so awkward. Mm-hmm. And so I was just kind of done for the day. I'm, like, on the verge of tears. I just want to go back home. But the cameras refused to leave me alone. Refused. Like, you know those days. I'm sure they happen to you a million times where they just don't let you off the hook. So I'm like, okay, my other plot line is I'm redecorating the guest house. So I'm just going to go do that. I don't have to talk when I'm doing that. They can just film me doing the guest house. So I go back. I'm finishing up the guest house. And then Hef comes over. And, of course, they, like, make him look like the hero. Like, not to say he wasn't concerned. Maybe he was. I think he was 100% concerned. Very worried. But I just feel like, I don't know. They just always make him look like the hero. And I'm just like. You were a dick. And I don't even tell him, like, what the problem was on camera because I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to have, like, a real argument on camera or do anything. Like, I just didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. So everything just got brushed over, and it just looks like I'm a crazy, emotional bitch that kind of ghosted because I don't feel connected to the other girls. And that's just not what it was <laughs> at all. Well, there's a couple of things I wanted to say in there. One is that when the cameras do that that was really upsetting and one of the hardest things about uh shooting a reality show is that if you're having a moment or a bad day or like things are kind of going to shit and you just need some time to yourself that's when they are like on your ass the mm -hmm. most because they want to catch that and it's so frustrating and it's like I get why they want to capture that and why they won't leave you alone but at the same time it's just like get off of me like I need yeah. a minute yeah. Like, don't you see how everything is just, like, going to shit right now? Mm -hmm. Like, can I just have a minute? Like, yeah. I don't want to do this right now. Exactly. And another reason I'm not cut out for reality TV is I just wouldn't give them that. Like, they can, you can continue to follow me, but I'm just going to, like, paint a fucking door and not say a word. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I feel like things continue um, to, like, they, they continue to try and make you look like you're just not... I don't even know how to, what the right word to say is this that you're just not successful at anything you're doing this day like they show you yeah and the thing and it's it's all a mess and you're like yeah, uh, and <laughs> yeah. Like they just feel like they're just trying to show failure 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 yeah. fail. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. really trying to point that all out and it's so mean it is I mean it's not really something that really bothers me because I'm kind of like at the time I was down to play along with what I call like the simple life genre of things but yeah you're right <laughs> yeah and um so anyway I actually have a whole chunk of this right here mm -hmm. it's my it's just feelings I put go for it and I put I feel like they're trying to make you look bad at everything like they that you don't know your way around a grocery store you can't even find the salad dressing even though it's right there in front of you yeah the pasta look the pasta salad looks like crap the chip bowls are too big you call the butlers for a million things you can't find the pots you didn't turn the burner yeah. on the burgers aren't good enough for half messing up on stenciling not socializing with everyone like they're just like hot Holly is not cut out for this. Exactly. And I'm fine. You know, it's not anything that's offensive to me and I'm fine playing along with that. But they're not getting the real drama, which of course they can't because this is Hep's show and it's all propaganda to make him and Playboy look good. 
But like the real drama was he fucking snapped at me in front of everybody and it was so embarrassing. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I know you said that he comes out and he looks like the hero and everything. And um, and he's like asking you like what's wrong and you mm-hmm. just say nothing. Yeah. What's wrong? I'm just tired. Like, yeah. you really play it off and stuff. Yeah. And it does pan out on the show, I think, as a very sweet scene. Mm-hmm. But only because you're just conceding on everything. Like, you don't ever confront him with what was really bothering you. Yeah. And it's a sweet scene. Like, it just makes him look good. Like, he's so caring. He notices every nuance. He noticed I left early and had to go all the way back to the house to track me down, which I'm sure the show asked him to do. Well, I'm sure he was going back anyway because exactly. he wasn't going to stay over there for I very know. long. Like, God forbid he's five minutes away from the mansion. Like, he's got to get back. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, okay, so then the next scene is we're in the pantry, and it's Alan and JD. Two of the butlers, and they're doing a scene asking each other, oh, has the magazine come yet? Are the girls on the cover? And you can totally tell it's a setup scene. Like, the producers are like, hey, can you guys talk about this? But they do such a good job. They I do. love it. They're really good. They do do an amazing job, but I just know that they would never have said those things in exactly. real life. I know. And it, it was just really cute, and I thought they did a good job. But then they cut to the office staff acting like they're so excited, too, about seeing the issue. And they do an amazing job, too. Yeah. Like, there's really some good scenes. I think that's my favorite part of this episode is the staff scenes are so cute. But I honestly don't feel like the staff would have been that excited. I mean, they were probably curious as we were too you know but I don't feel like they would have been that excited about seeing our issue yeah that as they make it and I think that they're just really trying to build it up for the audience yeah through, exactly through the staff's uh-huh. eyes like the, everybody's super excited about this and you should be too kind of thing yeah and they're so funny like I love it when Mary is telling everybody to be quiet and Norma goes I'm mute and Mary goes you've never been <laughs> mute in your life <laughs> Like, they're really good at, like, leaning into roles. Like, oh, we're the older women in the office, so we must be gossipy and never mute in our lives. Like, I feel like Norma's probably pretty good at keeping secrets, but they're really having fun with it and really leaning into, like, the tropes you would expect of, like, the older women in the office, you know? Yeah, and Norma's like, we can just open the box and peek and then seal it back up and no one will ever know. And Mary's like, no. And they play Mary (laughs) being so stern, but I know I know that she's just, like, doing it camera like she's not that mean yeah like she, and they just do such a good it's just heartwarming yeah and then doing. and then mary says holly's gonna be all over us yeah <laughs> like they're ready for yeah. the descent yeah and also like when the camera is shooting into the office the stacks of papers and files on crowded onto the shelves on the wall are so chaotic i know i remember it always being so chaotic it down was there. and how would you ever find anything i don't know i guess there was a method to the madness it but... was so confusing <laughs> So then the next scene, you're out walking the dogs. Yeah, I'm out walking the dogs. And in commentary, I talk about how you see this black cayenne in the driveway. Mm -hmm. And in commentary, I'm talking about how it was some random person who was up there for a meeting and they were kind of backing their car into a spot. And my dogs were out there and I was pissed because my dogs are running around off leash and they're just like not even looking where they're going. And in the commentary, I was like, yeah, I forget what I said. I said something like, yeah, I yelled at them and gave them a piece of my mind. But I'm smirking because I know that Holly in 2005 version of speaking my mind was um going up to somebody going um hey there's dogs so you like need to watch where you're going like that's my version of like really giving somebody a piece of my mind Ooh, I bet they were scared I know I bet they were scared to come back to that place <laughs> they probably called in and said that Holly's a real bitch I know the extent of my badassery was probably a one uh... on a scale of one to ten and so then you stop into Mary's office and you're asking about the magazine. And Mary's like, oh, I have no idea. You're snooping around a little mm-hmm. bit, but they've got it hidden. Yeah. And then I like when they cut to half and he's like, has Holly been around? <laughs> and he's all grumpy about it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, and then the next scene, we're all having lunch together in the med room. And I remember I hated the lighting in the med room at this time. And I'm looking at it now and I don't think we look bad. But at the time I was like, ugh. Yeah. The med room lighting. I know. I remember thinking the med room lighting was bad, too. Like, why do we have to meet in the med room? And I think that there was, like, a meeting or something going on in the dining room. Yeah. So we couldn't do the med room. The chips you were eating look so good. I was thinking that, too. I want to eat those. The salsa. Chips and salsa. Yes. 
And oh, oh, my next thing was, can we talk about how much we hate the lighting in the room? I know, it was so bad. <laughs> and so you're telling us that you went up to the office and you checked on it and they told you it didn't arrive yet. And you ask if we think it really didn't come yet or are they just hiding it? And I'm like, a hundred percent they're hiding it. Yeah, that was funny. And then, like, and then, oh, that's when they show Hef asking, has Holly been sneaking around up yeah. here? <laughs> and then they cut back to us, and we're chatting about whether it be us or Cali Monaco again. <laughs> yeah, which I was not convinced we were going to get it, so it was definite. So we really didn't know when we were filming this scene, right? No, I don't think we did. I mean, yeah. I think we were optimistic, and and signs were pointing mm-hmm. to it, and the fact that we are having a scheduled lunch in the med room with cameras on us, I think we were kind of, but I mean, they, in my mind, they could have just as easily been trying to film us to get the negative reaction too. Like exactly. you didn't get it. Wah, wah, wah. Exactly. Like I remember having that conversation. I was saying, I don't know. I think Kelly and Monica might get it. I was still kind of convinced that that could be a thing. Ugh. Thank God. But anyway, they have, oh, spoiler, <laughs> have walks into the med room with a box. But before he gets to the med room, it shows him, like, shuffling down the back hallway. And the back hallway was, like, from, it was bedrooms four, five, six, and then the offices. And the carpet is so chaotic. It was this weird, like, pr- zigzag print carpet. Yeah. And it was, like, dark brown and light brown. And I think it was probably pr- chosen because it was pretty good at hiding stains. But it's the most chaotic carpet I've ever seen in my life. It's just so busy. I didn't even pay attention to the carpet. I mean, oh I obviously I remember the carpet, but I don't. I didn't pay attention in that scene. You're probably just think... like so used to it after all the years. You're I not think even so. thinking about it. Well, I also think then when you turn the corner, all of the photos lining the hall. I thought that was always like just a lot. Yeah, that was chaotic too. <laughs> And it shows you're doing a talking head interview outside, and you can see Spot, the African crane, like, bopping around behind you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Cute. But, okay, so Hef walks into the room. He's carrying a box. Uh-huh. And it's our issue. So exciting. We made that spoiler alert. We got the cover. Yeah, we were so excited. So, oh, my God, like, beyond, beyond excited. And then Ke- Kendra says, I'm glad they airbrushed out my I know, which I don't even know if I knew about that at that time until she said that. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, there was a shot. It was one of our limo pictures, and you could, like, see a lot of stuff. And she asked Hef to airbrush it out, which is perfectly reasonable. But then he sells, he auctions off the original brown book with the OG picture in it. Sucks. Which is just, like, it's kind of another example of how in the Playboy world, nudity is just so taken for granted that, like, so many things get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. Like, it reminds me of, like, how playmates from the 70s talk about how when they decided to pose, the only place those nudes would ever be seen was in an issue that was out for one month. If anybody wanted to see those pictures, they'd have to go to a fucking library or something. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't know about the internet. They didn't know, like, all the outtakes from their... posing session in 1974 we're going to be like all over for anybody to look at at any time I mean it it completely changes the weight of the decision yeah it's so crazy well even like our shows that we did like um like my beaches show and your Uh show too and stuff they are like streaming now and stuff Mm -hmm. and so I asked about residuals on that kind of stuff and they're like oh well there was no such thing as streaming so you were you're you don't get any residuals Because you didn't have that in your contract. And it's like, how can you predict for something you don't know is going to happen, though? Like, anytime it airs, I should get residuals. You should get residuals. We should all be getting residuals. And we're not. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how they just use any chance they can to, like, fuck you over, basically. Yeah. And just so people know, because people have asked this, if we get residuals from Girls Next Door, I mean... Take a wild guess. We didn't even get paid at first. So, of course, we don't get residuals, which I think is pretty standard for reality TV. Like, there's no union for reality TV. Like, even though I was always in the Screen Actors Guild, even before I moved into the mansion, that doesn't count with reality TV, or at least it didn't back then. In fact, it jeopardizes us with SAG. Does it? Yeah, we can't do non-union work, and we were doing non-union work. Oh, I didn't know that counted since it was, like, a different category. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, damn. I, I mean. Know. No idea. Yeah. Um, but, oh, yeah. So, I'm in my interview, and that's where I have Spot. Uh-huh. Those walk by. It's funny. He walks right past in the background, but I think it's so cute. And I say I'm emotional, and it's more than I ever imagined, because I never even imagined myself on the co- cover. And you say. 
I forget what I said, but it was like recycled footage from episode two. Oh, will you say it's a milestone? Yeah, it's definitely a milestone. And I think I'm talking about how I feel legitimized just because most of Hef's ex-girlfriends were on the cover. And they, they show that parade of the ex-girlfriends they decide are worth showing in their minds. But I just think it's funny because I say it's more than I ever imagined because I never even imagined myself on the cover. And you say it's a milestone because mm -hmm. all of his other girlfriends were on it. And then Kendra says, I'm just happy they airbrushed my pussy out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say it means more to me than Hef will ever know. And I was super excited because can we talk about the hidden bunny? Have we talked about the hidden bunny on the covers before? I don't think so. There used to be this game called Spot the Bunny where every cover of Playboy would have a hidden bunny. Sometimes not so hidden. Sometimes the cover would just be a big bunny head. Yeah. But sometimes it would be a picture of a woman and there would be a bunny hidden like in the folds of the clothes or the hair or something. It was my favorite thing. Like when I used to get the magazine, even if I would just get like a one-off issue like way back in the day, I would like, it, that was my favorite game to do is find the bunny. And so I was so excited when they put the bunny in my hair because later I think I asked for it to be to have the bunny uh -huh. on me again but I don't think in that first one we had any choice in it, it yeah just we had happened. no idea where it was gonna show up yeah it just happened to be that the bunny was like twisted into my hair and I was like I got the bunny <laughs> yeah I feel like having a bunny as a mascot is a weird kind of thing and I don't think this was the intention at all but I think it's a weird kind of thing that makes the brand like almost appealing to kids, which is creepy because I remember my dad used to get a Playboy subscription and we weren't allowed to look at it or anything. But I remember when the issue would come, my mom and dad would try to find the bunny on the front. And what little kid who's five isn't going to think, oh, I want to see where the bunny's hiding. Yeah. So that's kind of creepy. Yeah. It's very I spy. Yeah. Which I love that too. <laughs> and then you say at the end that you feel like it finally legitimizes you. And um, and we had we talk about how good our issue is too because not only are we in it yeah but uh, Cali Monaco did have a pictorial in it mm -hmm. she probably shot a cover right no because well I mean maybe the thing was was they just reused old playmate photos of her oh but I didn't think that would necessarily stop them from using her as a cover because it just didn't stop Playboy like it didn't matter if the woman wanted to participate in a new pictorial or not they would just put whoever on the cover like one time they put Jessica Alba on the cover and she and it was a random like promo photo from a movie and she sued because she was like what the fuck nobody asked me yeah so and probably nobody paid her either yeah well you know what happened after is after it blew, blew up into a controversy Hef made an announcement that he donated the cost of like what he would typically pay somebody for a cover to a charity but they only paid people $750 to shoot a cover <laughs> wow so, they were probably thinking $100,000 or something and yeah I think that was <laughs> the lowest paying gig Jessica Alba ever had on a roster Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're in the magazine. Kelly Monaco has a pictorial in it. Raquel was the playmate, and they had an interview from Jamie Foxx on it. Yeah, so it was a lot of interesting stuff going on. Yeah, and a lot of people that have made appearances in the show, too. Yeah, absolutely. So it was a really strong issue. And I feel like uh, one thing that was for sure in this episode is that the three of us, our camaraderie was, like, really good. We were strong. Absolutely, yeah. And we had each other's backs, mm -hmm. and we were, like, totally, like, excited for each other. And I, I just felt like it was a really good time. Yeah, it was. A strong time for, like, the three of us relationship. Yeah, I don't think any real attitude starts until, like, season two. Like, I could be wrong. Like, we're going to watch the rest of these season one episodes, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, but looking back, do you love the cover? How do you feel about the cover? I think it's a really good concept. It's just really slick, but I, I just hate my hair because it's so outdated. I just look like I'm wearing a founding father wig and so does Kendra. <laughs> See, I liked it at the time and I was just so excited. I didn't even care. Yeah. But I look back on it now and I don't love the look on my face. Yeah, it's not my favorite cover if yeah. I had to pick out of all of our covers. Oh, it's not my favorite by far. What's my favorite, favorite comes later. What's one's your favorite? My favorite is the one um, where it's like the stars in the background. Oh, yeah, that one's pretty. That's my favorite one. We're wearing like the, well, it, there's two different versions of it. One, we're not wearing the bras, I think, and one we are, the rhinestone bras. 
Oh, no, I think it's all bras because I think it had to be that way since it was a cover. I think we probably took more photos without the bras, but... Yeah. Well, I thought there was two versions of that cover. Am I crazy now? Maybe for like a foreign issue, they might have used a topless one, but I don't. I just don't think you can put that on a newsstand. Well, no, we didn't show anything, but... I never saw one unless Oh my was God, like now foreign. I'm tripping. I have to figure out what this is now. There was two versions of that cover for some reason. Maybe foreign, because also like Playboy didn't love to do split run covers because it's more expensive. Like we did get to do a split run for our last cover because it was like we each got our own cover, mm -hmm. which those are my favorite covers. <laughs> but um, but usually they didn't like to do split run unless they had to for some reason because it was more expensive. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up this episode. Least favorite and favorite. Oh God, I didn't even do it this time. Okay, you go I'll first. I'll go first. Okay. So what I would change about this episode, I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple things. I mean, one, I think it's kind of um, weird that there's no guest house reveal. I know why there wasn't because the guest house wasn't actually finished, but I think for like the strength of an episode, there should have been a reveal at the end, maybe right before our cover reveal. Those two could have kind of mirrored each other. Um, also like, yeah, that would have been perfect. Yeah, I know. I just think, I think it wasn't done. Like, I'm going to go through my scrapbooks and try and find, because I went through the guest house once it was done and took all these photos on my camera, but I don't remember when it was actually finished. Well, I mean, they feel like they could have found one room that at least looked done. I know, Or, exactly. like, helped you get at least one room done, so they could have been like, ah. Yeah, but this was all shot during the first half of season one, and they were so cheap. They didn't want to help us out with anything. That's true. So, no guest house reveal is something I might change. Of course, you know, from a personal standpoint, I'm thinking it doesn't seem fair that they don't show Hef snapping at me. But thinking from the point of a show producer, I feel like they couldn't have shown that because it would have just made Hef look so rude and unlikable that it would have, like, damaged the show. Because I feel like the only reason, you know, people were able to, like, like the show is they felt like we were this fun family, you know, that really cared about each other and showing Hef being a dick just wouldn't have helped. Yeah, but don't you think that if um, if they would have showed him snapping and then later come out and apologize, that that would have redeemed things and, and made him even seem more relatable? If he was that humble in real life. Like if he if he was like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you, you know, you put all that work in and I just you know I just walked across the street wasn't having a great day but Hef would have never even said that or realized that or realized he did anything wrong it just wouldn't have occurred to him but I think you're right if that would have happened it would have made him look more relatable but I just don't think it could have happened yeah or make the barbecue more exciting. Like, so those are those are kind of like three three things. But we were just all so new and didn't know what we were doing. So the barbecue fell flat. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, obviously getting the cover, shooting the cover, getting the cover, like all the covers. Is your stuff, favorite? Is my favorite thing mm -hmm. about the thing. I mean, because I can't keep saying Winnie, but obviously Winnie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that because, I mean, I say it in – in the episode it's more than I ever even dreamed of because it was and so that was like incredible and even though I look back on it and I don't love that cover so much it still was like the, one of the, the most incredible things ever yeah I think my favorite was the butler and the secretary scenes oh this episode isn't so cut and dry for me like I have like three things listed for least favorite and then two things oh we'll keep things. going then oh well the um my favorite was the butler and the secretary scenes because I just think those were so cute and maybe this isn't my favorite thing because it's just like a dumb little thing, but I do like that they show that old photo of the guest house just because it's so weird. Yeah. And I know they really had to dig into the archives to find that photo. <laughs> and I just like it when things are kind of completed like that. Yeah. That's why I like putting some of our own photos on our Patreon because we talk about all this stuff, but it's fun to go see it sometimes. Yeah, I feel like people can imagine what that looked like, but when mm -hmm. they actually see it, like I feel like that's cool. Like I like that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm going to try really hard to find my um guest house pictures they'll be hard to find because i know they're not in a scrapbook they're in like a bin Oof. in my scrapbook room but um yeah. yeah it's like i like that on documentaries too when like you they you know you or not documentary but like a 
something that's on based on true mm-hmm. events and you watch this whole thing but then at the end they show you like what the real people look yes, like yes like they do that on the crown sometimes i love that it's so I eat that satisfying yeah. it really is uh, i think my least favorite thing i think maybe uh without having thought about this ahead of time i think maybe just that they make the party so boring. I know it was awkward and there was no music and that kind of thing, but I think that we actually had like a nice time. Maybe mm-hmm. not you, but the rest yeah. of us had like a nice time. And I feel like they don't show it and they typically are making the party look like it was a bust because if they made it look like we were having fun, then you did something right. Yeah. So you, you can't have had a good party. So they had to make it look like it was a total dud. Flop, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like that's unfortunate because we had a good group. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. And they made it look worse than it was. Not that there wasn't awkward moments. It just wasn't that awkward. We all knew each other. We yeah, all liked totally. each other. And, um, and so I think that really is a disservice. Is it funny for the show? Of course. But are we yeah. here to pick it apart? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I love <laughs> it's that. our job. It is. <laughs> I hate it when people, sometimes I'll see like a criticism where somebody's like, "Ah, you guys just complain and you're so negative. We want to hear behind the scenes. We are talking about behind the scenes. I can't think of like anything behind the scenes I'm not covering. Right. What? (laughs) Right. Or people will say, you just pick apart the things. It's just supposed to be a fun show. Um, That's what we're doing here. Yeah, that's the whole point of a rewatch podcast. You pick everything apart. Yeah. I mean, if we just said, oh, yeah, that was a fun episode. You should watch it. That would take two minutes and we don't have to have a podcast. Exactly. (laughs) Totally. So thank you for joining us. If you want more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.